We've been talking the last few Sundays about investment trips for a growing family. Now, let me just start by saying, guys, I am no expert in this, okay? But I find a lot of knowledge in reading. And researching things, for me, is kind of a way to relax. I like to take notes. I'm not a big reader, so I have an app on my computer that actually reads for me. And I take notes, okay? And that's where I find strength. When you guys were singing, we were singing this verse 3 of that song we just sang. It says, Near the cross, O Lamb of God, bring its scenes before me. Bring the scenes before me. The cross of Jesus. Help me walk from day to day with its shadows over me. Doesn't say he'll walk for us, does he? See, we got to walk. That's our job. We are all in families. That's our job. But when we think about him, Jesus Christ, <coughs> and we think about the cross, maybe if we would approach our family with the shadow of the cross over us would be a little easier. We're going to talk a little bit this morning about that. Guys, I honestly believe being a part of the family is one of the biggest, largest assets, greatest assets a person may ever have. Now, some of us are a family of one, aren't we? But we can belong. We can belong to a church, or we can belong to a group at work, or we can have loved ones close to us and feel that same joy as if we were all in a family. Some things we've looked at this series was dealing with acceptance. And I ran across this verse in Psalms 127, verse 1. And that's kind of been my cornerstone of this whole series. It says, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for coming to your house this morning. We just pray, Father God, that as we enter into this time of speaking and learning, Lord, that you open our minds and you open our hearts today to receive your word. Holy Spirit, we ask you to please be free to work on people's hearts, to work on our minds, to allow us to grow closer to you. We thank you, Father God, for the opportunity to be here. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first tip we looked at when we started this, this series was having the ability to understand each other. I shared a story with you on some folks who I just could not understand why they continually made the same mistakes over and over and over. And one night when I was praying, I felt God impressing on my heart that unless you've walked, in their shoes, you have no right feeling the way you feel. We all have walked different walks, haven't we? We all have grown up different ways. We all have had different moms and dads and step parents and whatever else may have come along life's way. And we all are accountable for our actions. We looked at number two, and that was to keep our commitments. Step number two. Understand each other. Get to know each other. And then keep our commitments, no matter what the cost. We looked at Matthew chapter 5, verse 37, where it says this to us. Let your yes be yes, and your no, no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. 
We must be trustworthy and do what we say we will do. We must, guys. That begins to grow trust. Trust then grows honor or respect. And respect then grows a family. You can't have a family without respect. You just can't. Last <coughs> week we looked at number three, which led us right into giving some respect or some honor. Romans 12.10 tells us that as Christ followers, we are to delight, take delight in honoring each other. Take delight in respecting each other. That's why I enjoy that meet and greet time we do here. Because you guys aren't up here watching. I'm watching. And when I see the hugs and the handshakes and the, the little kiss on the neck, respecting and honoring each other. And I find a lot of joy in that. Makes me feel good. Sometimes, guys, we just need to hear thank you, too. Sometimes holding the door for the lady that, that's got groceries in one arm and a, a little guy in the other arm or a gal in the other arm, and they're trying to get through the door, and you stop and hold the door for them, and you hear those two wonderful words, oh, thank you. Doesn't that make you feel good? Honoring each other, helping each other appreciating one another. I was really excited yesterday. I, I think I surprised the surprisees. <laughs> After much thought and uh, aggravation to my daughter, I finally made her confess why we needed to be here Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock. So she kind of left the the surprise out of the bag. So I told Debbie when we're driving up here, I said, we're going to take 127 and sneak in on 20. Because they're going to be looking out that side window over there waiting for us to show up. And we're going to go in the front doors and surprise them. So we was purposely a little late and snuck in the front doors and I seen everybody in the fellowship hall and I snuck around the corner and I go, what's going on in here? I think I scared Dorothy. Everybody <laughs> jumped a little bit. So where do we go? We need to respect one another. We need to honor each other. We need to understand each other. We need to do all these things. What do we do next? One of my favorite things. Offer encouragement. Start helping one another. The easiest way to grow a healthy relationship, according to most sociologists today, is to offer words of encouragement, to offer actions of encouragement. And guys, we find those words in our Holy Bible. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9 through 11 tells us this. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, what does that mean? Also, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Encourage one another. Build each other up. I see that happening all around us. I, uh, I sometimes wonder where we need to improve here. What can we do to improve? And, and much to my delight, I've had folks say, oh, don't change a thing. Just keep doing what you're doing. Encourage one another. Let me ask you a question. How do we encourage each other? Don't you love her? Let me ask you a question. 
Let's start by smiling. By smiling. It's not hard to do. I get picked on all the time at work because they go, are you ever down? I love to smile. I love to see folks who have a frown turn it upside down and make us smile. How many times have you walked into a restaurant or a place of business and the first person you meet looks like they just chewed on a sweet tart? <laughs> uh -huh. Have you been there? They look at you, they'll go, well, that table's open, take a seat. Come by and they drop your glass on the table and it kind of spills all over. Have you been? What do you do? Are you going to go back? I'm terrible about that because I'll tell all my friends, I can't believe the service I received at this restaurant. How unfriendly it was. And guys, sometimes our families resemble that. We might be cooking, getting everybody ready, and the family shows up. And here's my thing. If you're not helping, get out of the kitchen. I'm busy. Right? I might as well chew down a sweet tart and holler at it. That's no good. Smile. Be friendly. Sometimes we see the same thing in our churches, guys. And that really scares me. I've walked into a church before and walked through the back and taken a seat and not one person said good morning to me. Or if somebody is out there, they look like they've been chewing on sweet tarts all morning mm -hmm. and it's not friendly at all. Shame on us. Shame on us. Here's another idea. How about the words we share? The stories we tell. Dale Carnegie mentioned in his book, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. He said this, that people are like gold. You must mine thousands of tons of dirt to find that one ounce of gold. But yet, that never stops a miner. They never stop digging. They always help until they find the gold. Sometimes I feel as family folks, we give up too soon. We give up too soon. Everyone has some gold in them. And sometimes through actions and through life, our vision gets so clouded, we can't see it no got to say these words, I will not stop digging. I will find that gold, no matter what the cost. I believe in tough love. I believe there's a time when you got to say, I can't do this no more. And things need to happen. I believe that. But there's nothing wrong with writing a letter. There's nothing wrong with saying those words. We've had to do this, but I still love you. There's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes division has to take place, but love does not have to stop. And that happens. We need to learn to understand that. Folks are good, and we need to help them. One more here. Giving gifts. <clears throat> Yesterday I never expected gifts. I really wish that wouldn't have been part of the deal. Because then they wanted us to open and everything. And, but thank you so much for the gifts. They weren't expected. It was a surprise. But do you know giving gifts is actually scriptural. We're going to look at that in just a little bit here. I want to talk about my sister Becky, though. She's a gift giver. 
It might be a gumball or a fireball, especially during church. She likes to give gifts. She likes to make people happy. My wife's the same way. Neighbor kids will come around. She's always got a cupcake or a trinket in her hand. Walmart bakeries in business because we buy cupcakes all the time. We give away to the neighbor kids. <laughs> Giving is a good thing. I see as much joy in her face as I do the little kiddos. Giving is a good thing. Folks delight in receiving a gift. Folks delight in giving away gifts. In Acts chapter 4, verses 33 through 37, we see these words. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all. Oh that there were no needy persons among them. From time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to anyone who had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. We've seen wonderful things happen here at the church place. Your faithful giving has allowed us to make so many repairs and so many needed purchases. It just, it, it blows my mind that a group of folks could be so faithful in your giving. And I want to speak for the board here when we say thank you. Thank you so much for allowing us to impact the community where we live. Because sad to say, guys, in this day and age, it takes money, doesn't it? Just like back then, when money came to the apostles, what'd they do? gave it away. They fixed things up. They helped folks who were needy. And that's what we want to do here. In our bulletins, the purpose of this church is to reach the hurting, the lost, and the broken of all ages with the good news of Jesus Christ. And we will use today's tools to share yesterday's story. We'll teach, and train, and worship our wonderful Savior. That's what family does. We help one another. We understand each other. We keep our commitments. We share respect. And we offer encouragement. A friendly smile is a great place to start. God keeps every commitment he has ever made to us. Perhaps we should try and do the same. God allows us much honor and privileges to be a part and to enjoy the precious gift of his son Jesus. Because through his son, we can have eternal life. What a wonderful gift God has given us to share with others. Life in a place called heaven where streets are made of gold and mansions are bright and sunny is a place Jesus has prepared for us if we'll just call on his name. We've shared a lot of things about family. I need to ask the questions. Do you know Jesus this morning? <clears throat> Are you familiar with this place called heaven? 
the family here at this church would love to welcome you. Would love to pray with you if you don't know Jesus. And this morning, that opportunity is available. To simply ask Jesus to come into my heart. That's all you have to do. And then simply ask Him to forgive me of all my sins and all my unrighteousness. And He'll do it. He's promised us in His Word that He will do that. And then we'll have a place in heaven to be with him and the rest of the family all the days of our life. Amen? Amen. We're going to pray. Let's sing that song just as I am. Do you got that? Okay. We're going to pray, guys. We're going to sing this song. And then we'll be dismissed. But don't let... Don't let Satan rob you from that chance this morning to come to know him and to be part with him. <clears throat> Page 488, guys. 488. <clears throat> we'll do the first and last verse. Thank you.